Welcome back to the World Championship Series Europe round of 16 for the Premier League in season number three. We have just two matches remaining of the round of 16. It's been a very long week, but it's flown by uh, with Grubby. Uh, let's talk through the graphic as well uh, right now because we've got the bracket on screen. MMA in the gold spot. He classified as the seventh player to get through to the quarterfinals, but we're waiting to find out who will be the other one. Duck Duck waits in the lower bracket final and he will play one of the next two players, either Starbuck or Titan. Um, Grubby, these two Europeans now, they're going to knock one. One of them's going to knock each other out, which is a shame for Europe. Of course, it means that you know, Korea dominating once more, as ever they have done in StarCraft. Um, which one of these two would you pick if you could handpick them to go go and play uh, in the final game against Duck Duck? I think uh, the first game between them will kind of show who is the right man to go up against Duck Duck. It's a bit of a cliche, really, but if Starduck can beat Titan. Who's very good. He's beaten uh, Stefano many times, even at Stefano speak. He's beaten Nurcho many times, uh, particularly online, because they play tons and tons of online cups, both of them really. Uh, Titan's really good at PvZ. If he can, uh, it, like if Starbuck beats Titan, he can probably beat Duck Duck too. Uh, also, if he's prepared for Duck Duck. But if, if Titan wins here, well, we already saw he was kind of close against Duck Duck in the first series, so. Uh, either way, Duck Duck's got a fight on his hands, I think. Yeah, okay. Um, Starbuck, what has he got to do in this game to get over what he didn't do in the first game? I mean, I'm not going to, I don't want to be too harsh on him because, as we've said, he's 16, he's yeah. his first big tournament, but I actually thought he was very poor and, and he didn't look like a kind of player that was going to take down MMA. 27 minutes in total play for the yeah. two games is a bit horrible for your first match. So he's, he's got a real mountain to climb, really, and he's now going up against a very old hand. Titan, he knows how to deal with these young kids. He knows how to get rid of them, doesn't he? Yeah. Um, it, it's hard to say. Like, we see a lot of different Titans, so we're going to have to wait and see. One thing, um, one thing I want to mention is, like, I talk to a lot of different players, and they always say Starbucks PVC is really good. So... Just imagine a world whereby Starbucks says, okay, I've got two weeks to prepare. I'm just gonna kind of neglect my first match. It, look, it sounds a little stupid, but like MMA is so good and maybe he doesn't like the matchup. Maybe he says, I can get 11% progress in my uh, ZVT matchup, or I can get 24% progress, for instance, in my P uh, ZVP matchup. Since his opponents in his group are 66% Protoss. Even though they're not the first opponent, having an immaculate PVZ, maybe, he could, even if he loses the first game. And I'm not saying that's what he said, but if that's what he said to himself in his mind, maybe uh, he expected to lose the first one and he still feels like the whole world of possibilities is open for him. All right. Um, I've changed you from being a player momentarily. Don't, don't get too scared. You're not retiring just yet. Uh, we're not going to let you do that for a while, by the way. <laughs> but you're now Coach Grubby and... and Starbuck is your main man, okay? And he's sitting here and he's got to win this game. What are you speaking into his ear right now? Are you, are you whispering in strategy or are you whispering in words of motivation? What are you doing? Um, I don't know. Uh, I feel like to be a really good coach, you kind of got to know someone really well. So whatever I say could have a good or negative effect. I don't know him well enough, unfortunately. So I'm afraid at this junction, I wouldn't be quite be the right coach for him. I guess like just do your best or anything. You've got lots of fans here cheering for you. It's not the worst thing in the world to have a lot of friends and family coming over all the way from your country here to cheer for you. So having that, if you can draw power from that, I would say think of your friends and family at home cheering for you. Think of the people here cheering for you. Anything more than that uh, is just the game. Okay. All right. Good stuff. Let's get this match underway then. Match number four in Group D is the clash of the Eastern Europeans. It's Titan versus Starbuck. Let's go over to our commentary team of Apollo and Kolaris. Thanks very much, guys. Welcome back to the caster's desk here. For now, a series which determine who falls down to Challenger and who we follow on along the road to see if they can advance on to the round of eight. This, as every day this week, has been, of course, the saddest match to commentate because it is disappointing to see a play go home. Yeah. But if we look on the bright side of things, as the glass is half full, it's a player that moves on for another chance, a second chance to advance from this group. Starbuck had a difficult start to the day, and let's just say he did get beat quite easily by MMA. Uh, but Titan played a good, solid PvP. Yeah. And played against a good opponent. He played good. And I'm sure that Titan's coming into this and saying, all right, it was a good series. PvP sometimes can be brutal. Now it's time. 
Now it's time to really give it everything I've got. And he certainly has to. Against a player like Starbuck, Starbuck feels very confident in this matchup. He said it uh, during our interview in the round of 32. He said it uh, moving on through that time. And now in the round of 16, he has two Protoss to try and uh, trump here if he is able. To, well, <laughs> he has to defeat Titan first, of course. And then if that is the case, yep. then Duck Duck awaits him. And he said that's what he likes. Look at that, look at it, grinning to oh. each other at the moment on these vetoes. So Belshir and Whirlwind are the two maps that Starbuck says out. And then Derelict Watcher is Titan's first veto, a difficult map to play against aggressive Zerg players on. And Polar Knight is the other one, another more difficult map to play against aggressive Zergs on, which leaves us with Akalon Wastes, which is probably going to be Titan's map, Frost, and then Yonsu. Mm. If, if I'm saying Yonsu right, Yonsu. Yonsu. It's the hardest one of them. <laughs> but... Yeah, on Sue. <laughs> yeah, on. Yeah, I guess so. All right, so we have a Colossal Titan fighting against a Titan that might build Colossi. This is uh, certainly one that is going to be cool. I'm, I'm really looking forward to this. Of mm -hmm. all the matches that we had today, uh, it's really nice to see what Starbucks going to bring in this matchup. Yeah. But likewise, Titan plays this matchup just in general his own way. Titan is, is a guy that has a very stylized play, and it's, it's a pleasure to watch sometimes. It really is, and... Uh... I would like to see that again here and hopefully brings it with a winning performance behind it. But this is where Titan plugs in his headset and listens to Eminem. You only get one shot. He's like, oh, it's two shots because I'm in the loser's hey. match. <laughs> but, uh, <laughs> but we'll see how he plays now. Um, Come into Akron Waste, Yeonsu being our second map, and then Frost. Okay, uh, hmm. so I like this well, map here for, for Titan to kick things off on. And remember... Just remember that Starbuck is 16. He is new. He is fresh to the Premier League. He is inexperienced. And a win to start off is the most important for a confidence boost. His uh, countrymen said that initially against MMA. Uh, back there, they said if he can win game number one against MMA, then he, maybe he can really do it. And yeah. now it's just the same. He needs to really win, to be honest, his opponent's map. A lot of the times, as a professional player, you say, all right, well, that's your map. You win it. And it's like tennis, right? You won your serve. Now it's my turn. I'll win my serve. And it's always, can I win my opponent's serve? So in this regard, it, it, it really is, can Starbuck win on his opponent's map? Yeah, that's certainly true. Uh, as you can see here, Titan, 50% against Zergs across the WCS system as a whole. And the interesting thing about this matchup is that this matchup played out twice just a little over a month ago, uh, mm -hmm. under a month ago. Uh, as yeah. Titan and, and who won? It was Starbuck twice. Yeah. 2-0 and 2-1. Yeah. Different circumstances now. And to be honest, results like that, he'll be like, all right, I beat him before. And then he'll be like, I can do it again. Mm. But I feel Titan's like, yeah, but this is a completely different ball game. We're actually yeah. playing in front of an audience with cameras in our faces, exactly. lights blind in our eyes, and two idiotic commentators thinking they know <laughs> what's going on. Yeah. It's a completely different environment. And uh, just to reiterate again, guys, these statistics only reflect over a very small pool of games. So 100%, yeah, those, those were there. Uh, yeah. And now, unfortunately, for Starbuck, his turn's fallen down a little bit uh, to 33%. So, yep, it's by the bye. <laughs> and let's see if he can maintain that 100% win record against Protoss players. He uh, obviously... Where is he? Where is he? Where is he? Who are you looking being for? Grubby before. Oh, yeah. yeah sorry He's being that. grubby. So uh, we'll see if he can uh, you know, beat another Protoss player in this tournament. Uh, so Aklon Waste here. Uh, the reason why this is uh, Titan's map, which is uh, what we're looking at currently, is because it is a more defensive map. It's much easier to establish your third base as a Protoss player. Yeah. And you can take the one that's out in the open and then rely on the back one to take. It depends on your play style. And it is much easier to defend and sit yourself up on four bases where Protoss always wants to be. It's one of the main characteristics of this map is exactly. to be able to sit on four bases, build a big army, kill your opponent. And sometimes, as a Zerg player, it's difficult to break. Yeah, it really is. And then Zergs, they get a little bit frustrated when a Protoss is able to get at least three bases, then up to four bases as well. That's a scary thing to go up against as a Zerg player. Uh, but this man, Starbuck, 
He's not too fearful of that. He's very, very confident in this matchup. He's had a lot of success with it in the past. Mm -hmm. And he's looking he's looking to dominate. And hello, audience. Thanks for coming Hi. out today, guys. Hope you've had a lot of fun. <laughs> we have a lot of uh, Slovenians here supporting Starbuck. And then a little German player in the bottom left. Oh, little Gabriel, Mr. Miles Marine. And uh, now it's almost time for battle. We are just waiting for the players to say go. We are just having a couple of minutes. It is a very important match between the two. Of course, Starbuck here, whilst Zero Two is now fighting to stay on. Likewise, is Titan fighting for that second chance. The second chance isn't an easy one, though, because mm. not only do they need to step ready for the second chance by beating their opponent right now, but it's against the reigning champion, yeah. Duck Duck, who's there waiting eagerly to just to be able to close it up and advance with MMA. And it's a very difficult phase that both these players are into right now. Yeah, have any second place finish to take throughout these group stages? Going up against the reigning champion, that one, that one's a tough one, gotta say. Uh, but now these guys are getting ready to jump into Aklon Waste here for PVZ. And in the final round, we guarantee ourselves either PVZ or PVP. So I'm looking forward to it either way. Yep. I'm enjoying these matchups as of late. Yep, this week has been absolutely fantastic. Four great yeah. days, Group A, B, C, and now D. And next weekend, it's only going to get better. Ooh. And the round of eight starting on Saturday next week with the finals on Sunday. If you've got the opportunity to come to Germany Cologne, you best be here because the games are going to be amazing. But right now, let's focus on this game, the loser's match of Group D. And spawning up to the top left-hand corner are Red Protoss, representing Rock's Kiss as well as Russia. Ladies and gentlemen, give it up for Titan. And spawning down to the bottom right are Blue Zerg, representing MIA as well as Slovenia. Give it up for Starbuck. I've improved his nickname. Yes. Oh. No, he's no longer the Coffee Zerg. Okay. He's the Venti Zerg. Oh, I like it. He's you a tall guy. It. He's a tall guy. You get it. It's a good one. It's a good one. I'm impressed, Apollo. Thanks, mate. Right. And of course, thank you to our wonderful observer. I bow to you, my friend. And of course, Funker Starcraft doing our observing today. Alexander Verferia. That looks like Carrier with a V. Is it Veria? I don't know. Maybe I'm pronouncing that wrong, but I'm going to go with Verrier. 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 Sounds very <sighs> French. <sighs> we, as English, we can do really good French accents, clearly. Oui, oui, monsieur. Oui, oui. <laughs> He's probably really angry at us right now. <laughs> <laughs> Cheers, mate. Aww. Thanks very much for doing our observing. It saves Kolaris doing it. It certainly does. Uh, he's very much appreciated. <laughs> certainly do. It's it's difficult to commentate and uh, observe at the same time, but it does have to happen, and uh, it's a lot of fun at the same time, actually. I get my French ac accent from uh, watching Only Fools and Horses. Which bin, Only Fools and Horses? Where well, they go? and Rodney when they go to France. When they go and go for the booze? Yeah. Ah, uh, yeah. Ah, uh, yeah. I like it. All right, so uh, we do just have a gateway opening here from Titan. To be honest, Titan... Um, there's a couple of Protoss players who have a similar play style to him, mm -hmm. but he is very much so his own man. He's his own stylist, he does whatever he wants, he knows what looks good and plays good and is good. Uh, so it is very difficult to really predict what we're going to see from him in this yeah. game. He does lots of weird timings, um, whether it be two, three, four bases, just comes and hits at you when you're at the weakest, and sometimes when you're not expecting it, which really makes him difficult to play against. But I'm sure Starbuck, having already beat him twice in the last month or two, is probably well prepared to be able to beat him. And on top of that, it's his favorite matchup, man. It is, it's his favorite matchup. He likes this one quite a He's lot. He's hidden those two Zerglings, by the way. Yeah, he did. Well, they're, they're not so much hidden anymore, but that's no. six. Hit them in plain sight, as Grubby once said, but mm. then, unfortunately, <laughs> Six Zerglings are actually nice. I've been doing this a lot my, uh, in recent times, because yeah. what they do is they force usually a second Zealot, if you're on one gas, mm. or they force um, a delayed Expo, because if you only got the Zelda Mothership Core, it's a lot harder to take your expansion, oh, especially yeah. Yeah. if you put a pylon down on the low ground earlier, because it's usually going to get picked off. So one. that pylon has to be in the main base, so it slows it down, it slows the wall down, just by building two additional Zerglings. It's kind of nice. I, I kind of like it. I am going to have to watch out for that, me playing Protoss a little bit more. Yeah, and you can surround the Zelda, actually. Yeah, um, you could. Ooh. If the other one isn't there, but yeah, it is. So, he's, uh, uh, he's helping his brother out. And and if you can pick that probe off, that's always nice. I mean, it would die, but the Zerglings, in turn, might 
take a little bit of damage themselves. So he throws down the Nexus. Titan's going to be stable and sturdy. Drones behind this for Starbuck, but no natural just yet. So he wants that. He really wants that. Uh, although he could get aggressive. It's, it's weird, though, for if Starbuck were to get aggressive, I feel, because um, his macro game in PvZ is uh, really, really good. So he's going to send that drone How down. good is good on a scale of 10? Uh, <laughs> on a scale of 16, how good is good? Let's go for 15.3. Right. <laughs> well, this is uh, mm. a disappointing scout, of course. Yeah. Uh, I, I like the spine crawler add-on too. Gateway expand, a lot of Protoss players like to get the Zealots down to that base there because it is harder to get from the main down to the third. But no, no second, uh, no third base, sorry, yet. Here comes the pressure and he's going to start building Lings again because he knows there's going to be a gateway follow-up to this. There is a pro behind this, if I'm not mistaken. So we are going to see some dark pressure. The spine crawl and double queens down there. Wow. In sacrifice of getting a fast, fast third base, which is in the natural position, is really good. And he's going to get a wraparound on one of these zealots here if he can use the queens. Yeah. He's anticipating oh. his opponent's movements really, really nicely here. Does not get that zealot in the end. Saves itself. Pylons on the high ground. He doesn't have vision of that just yet. No. But... Uh, he's got to be careful though, but he's got 10 lings on the way, he knows and he's on Titan the way. is going to be pushed off this. So Titan shouldn't really be able to get too much done down. But the thing is, if you keep on warping in Zealots, you keep on microing them back, and your opponent gets supply blocked, for example, yeah. this could work here. Three overlords on the way, more Zealots are going to come in here, and there's a lot of gas that he can use for sentries later on. I really like the positioning of uh, his Zerglings uh, that they were initially trying to wrap around because they were trying to for, uh, f uh, make his opponent avoid this natural, trying to funnel him towards the third base. But Titan's slightly seen around that, and he's moved up into this position that's a little bit weak with no spine crawler there. Whoop. Hello. Whoop. Yeah, that's going to be easy to do with a lot of Zerglings on the way. He's not going to lose anything here. He's got way too many Zerglings on the way. He's got Zergling speed as well. Um, there's queens everywhere here. Creep just coming from everywhere as well. It's a creep, zergling, zealot, queen party. Yeah, yeah. no more zealots should be invested into this. Two more yeah. have come in. He is at five, but with the amount of zerglings coming, I think it's... Oh, the mothership call's gone as well, so nice pick off oh. there by Starbuck. And there's a lot of links. 26, man, so that's a lot. Yeah, this is going to get shut down. Titan. But one thing to note, though, Lings aren't drones. That's true. And that's a lot of drones that are missing. And this is very similar to a situation we saw previously in WCS round of 16 where you just you just didn't have the drones to compensate. And look, 12 more Lings on the way as well behind all that cleanup. Three Queens is weird though. I don't really understand three Queens. Hmm. Additional three Queens. Uh, he's currently sitting at three, so he'd have three spare ones. Does he just keep making Queens? And Usually in this matchup, you only really have one spare one, but yeah. three? That's a lot. That's a lot of spare ones. Maybe if there's come some kind of follow-up air attack or something. He hasn't really read into the game and what's going on yet. So that's an interesting move. But one thing, he is catching up very fast in his economy now. He's had the time. He's had the freedom. Unless, of course, it's a Starbucks special and we see something crazy. Nice catch on and a few links. He's got another queen. Wait, that can't... Wait, is that... That's a seventh queen. Jeez. Uh... Seven queens. I I have to go for Starbucks special. Some some something. Well, what is it? <laughs> He's playing against robotics facility. Maybe though. a Nidus swarm and throwing it at the front. I mean, queens and... are very very good defensively, right? They're, I mean, let's yeah, look are. at why queens are being made. Maybe they're very good defensively. They're going to play very well against air. They're going to play against the Mothership Core. They're going to play against Warp Prisms, is what we see here as well. Can bring down the Warp Prism, and of course they're going to be able to transfuse each other. But let's look through Starbucks' vision. What's he he seen? hasn't seen the robotics facility, but he has seen additional gateways being added on. Right. He knows his opponent's on two bases. He's building more spine crawlers, and it looks like he's anticipating some form of two base attack. His opponent, though, is only going to be on about six gateways. It's not a big two base. You know, not a big. And there's not enough ropes behind the two <laughs> base. Yeah. He's going to throw down a third nexus here for sure. Yeah, it, it seems that way. And he's even cleaned up the Zergling that was at that third base. So any kind of burrow, if he wanted to burrow a Zergling there or something like that, it's not going to work out. He's moving across the map here, and he does get vision of it with those Zerglings. Um, but he's got so much defense set up back yeah, home. Yeah, and he's going to move around with his Zerglings here so he can find a probe or something. Ideally, he needs to see the Nexus so he knows yeah. not to overcommit onto units because this he shouldn't overcommit in units here because that's kind of bad for him considering there's a third. The Lings do try to go to the natural, don't do anything here. Queen out in the open. Uh, is gonna not escape. No, nope, those spine crawlers will hold him at bay at this location for now. But you're, the, the most important thing was the fact that the Zerglings didn't get he's in. He's building eight drones. He knows he's a, it's not a full-on attack, but yeah. he's got to be careful not to 
overdrone in this regard. Even though he's got spines, this is still a lot of units. Yeah, a lot of space control as well. A lot of the queens converging on this location to try and push it back with transfuses as well as yeah. making the defense a little easier and trying to focus down that Mothership Core if that goes oh, down. Oh, Mothership Core goes down. Oh. Units stuck out in the open here. And all these stalkers are going to end up dying off. A burrow on the queen as well to keep it alive along with transfuses. Star does nice. the Starbuck holds us off. Yeah, well done, Starbuck there. Great micro with his units, and he's got a lot done for himself. He's got to be careful about the warp prism, though. Yeah. He spotted the third nexus, and at this point, I'd say, all right, calm down on the unit production, buddy. Let's just, you know, open your supply, get some drones going, maybe look at your fourth, maybe look at some upgrades, because he hasn't really got any upgrades yet, has he? So at this point, upgrades are going to be kind of important. He may decide to throw down double evolution chambers to really catch back up with upgrades. I think that might be the right way here, unless, as you say, there's a Starbuck special coming in here, but I, I can't see how that would work on such a defensive map like this. Well, the way Starbuck Ooh. was using Burrow just then... Oh, Spire. If he doesn't go upgrades and he saves his gas here, builds nothing but drones and, and a fourth base and maybe some Zerglings, he could actually save up to a lot of Mutalisks. Well, what's the Assault's also going on? If Titan goes for a regression here, he could just Burrow the drones and he can't see them. Yeah. I mean, <laughs> that's that's just that's just it. I mean, and he can't see those at the front either. Yeah, uh, his units are very hmm. far away, though. That was the one thing he needed to be careful about was the warp prism. He kind of forgot about it. It was there before with the Mothership Core. Yeah. It got away. He forgot about it, and now he's getting punished because of that. A little bit of a mistake there, and he may lose uh, uh, quite a lot. Oh, yeah, and the thing is, is that if the drones did borrow them, the Zealots would just focus entirely on the layer. Uh, sorry, the hatchery, and then they're going to just go for it anyway. Uh, Never mind everything. He's going to transfuse uh -oh. that bad boy. He's got quite a few transfusers left over, so he should be able to keep it alive for these links to come back and help that out. That's a good defense there by Starbuck. But... But he's not mining <laughs> gas from his main. Yeah. Which means he hasn't got as much gas as he would have liked Ooh. to build the Mutalisks. And Titan's doing good amounts of damage to that expanding base there. Yeah, that's units. not too important because there's another one up north which is faster and ah, yes. already upgrading. And meanwhile behind this there is the Robo Bay. Blink plus two, two. Eight Mutalisks are on the way. Does he know about the uh, Spire? No, he does not. Mm. No, he does not. That hatchery is going to get killed off here, unfortunately. But he is dealing with the Warp Prism in the main base. Yeah. Pushing that away, and uh, it still does 13 Mutalists, man. That's a lot of Mutalists. That's a lot of Mutalists, and there's a lot of units that don't have a lot of anti-air moving through the middle. Oh, he's seen them. Okay, so he's okay. now seen the Mutalists, and all of a sudden Titan's like, oh, I don't have any anti-air. Because look at his army in the middle of the map. He actually doesn't really have any anti-air. There's a handful stalkers. of Stalkers and Sentries. Mm. If the Roaches and Lings and Mutalists come together, and if he picks off the Mothership Core, uh -oh. that's Zealots, not anti-air. I swear to God, if Starbuck goes with everything, I feel he may be able to stop that. Yep, and if he gets that's... the Mothership Core, there's no retreat, gets the Warp Prison, there's no reinforcements. That's a really, really strong army here. But where are the Mutalists going, though? Where oh, he's going across. Ooh. Ooh. Set, setting up these Spine Crawlers. They're not going to set up in time, though. He's just going to go straight for the Mineral Lines, and Starbuck is almost provoking his opponent to just go Hell for Leather and try and tell him off now, but the Roaches and Zerglings, one, they're one not doing too much. Versus zero, zero. I really think yeah. the Mutalists probably could have been better in actually defending this point. Um, meanwhile, the Mutalists over the other side, killing off quite a few probes. They're chasing down the Stalkers, but Cannons are going to help out. Well, he's getting to a lot of the pros, but this army's untouched. Yeah. I really feel that he should have had the Mulus at this point. I think that would have helped his game a lot because eventually there's going to be enough Stalkers to defend at home. But what is there to stop these 1-1 one -one units which are approaching 2-2? Two -two? I really think, man, I really think that if he'd taken the, the, the Warp Prism and the Mothership Core out and came with everything together, cleaned it up, Ah, uh, Mutalists have killed off 29 workers so far. If they come back and kill off the Immortals and stuff, then maybe he can stabilize because he actually hasn't lost that many drones. He's still at 59 against 41. Mm. Uh, that base dying, though, that kind of hurts a bit. Yeah, that. well, he's lost his, his north base. Yeah. He's lost his natural. Ouch, ouch, ouch. Decision-making could have been his downfall here. This game's all over the place. Titan is going for another hatchery, yeah. knowing that he's done so much damage. He has, Starbuck has one mining base with some long-distance mining as well. Yeah. So, yes, he'll kill like, this, this is off. what it would have looked like earlier, but yeah. with Lings and Roaches as well. Ah, uh, yes, he will kill this off, but Titan behind this, his economy is vastly superior right now. Uh, oh, and those reinforcing stalkers. They've got 2-2. Two, two. They have 2-2. 2-1-2. Two, two. Two, yeah. Two. yeah, 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 yeah. It's like a football formation with only five players. <laughs> anyway. <Yeah. laughs> it's a five-a-side game. Yeah. Ah, there we go. I don't know much about football. Sorry. You backed um, me on. You saved me. <laughs>
Yeah, this this is obviously looking very bad right now. There's going to be a continuation of uh, stalkers being made. The economy has just been stopped for Starbuck. He like doesn't yeah. have any money. And then Titan still has probes. The Mutalists are getting picked up on now. There's a lot of Mutalists, but with the upgrades you you mentioned, the five side upgrades, they're actually going to be so good as long as he oh. keeps blinking, <laughs> keeps on warping in more units. Look at Starbuck supply. Oh, that warp two Colossi had an absolute field day with those drones. And the Colossi are going to come along and maybe tank some damage, but the stalkers deal with it. GG, Starbuck does lose the first game, and Titan moves on victoriously onto the second. Yeah, I mean, I, I'll go back to the point again. I, I drilled it in before. I really think, as MMA is getting a cheer from the crowd as he goes through our first <laughs> place finisher today, uh, but I can't help but think, if Starbuck was to watch that replay again and looked at the army composition and said, you know what, man, I probably could have defended that yeah. and taken the lead in the game because that was three Immortals, Stalker Sentries, and from that point, he's on five bases. Okay, four because one got killed off, but he can retake the fifth. Yeah, exactly. And there's no way that Titan can move out off three bases because then, once he loses his army, he has to defend against the Mutalists. He may not take damage, but he's locked in his own base for a long time, which allows Starbuck to build himself up properly to deal when Titan is really ready to move out. And I think one wrong decision here may have cost Starbuck the game. Mm. But whatever the case, if we look on the bright side again, uh, Glaf is half full, is that was his opponent's map. It was, yeah. Technically in his opponent's map, so that was the one that Titan was comfortable on. Here is the next one. This was Starbuck's choice. Yep, again, smaller map. Ability to, you know, apply aggression a little quicker here. And uh, just during that, you know, Starbuck shaking his head. He knew there was mistakes there. He absolutely knows it. Even doesn't even have to watch the replay in the end. Yeah. Uh, he was a little bit flustered. And now moving on to Yonsu. This is a good opportunity for Starbuck to get himself back into this series and back into this group. I think that was the cheer for That was McDonald's. the cheeseburger cheer. Yeah, that was the, cheeseburger, the cheeseburger cheer. That's the cheeseburger cheer. We have that daily. <laughs> Around this time, there's the cheeseburger cheer. Uh, all right, so here we are. Now we're ready for map number two between these two fine gentlemen. Who's going to go on? Who is going to go on? We'll find out here as we move on to Yonsu for our second game in this best of three. Titan looking for retribution in not only this series, but also the final series. He wants to get to play Duck Duck again as Spawn Gap to the bottom left, our Red Protoss, representing Rock's Kiss. Ladies and gents, give it up for Titan. Woohoo! Woo! Yeah, woo! Hey, Titan. And up to the top right are Blue Zerg, representing MIA as well as Slovenia. Give it up for Starbuck. <laughs> okay. Gonna be Nexus first this time, or Forge. Uh, depends on which one he wants. Uh, different opening here. And it looks like it's a very early Forge. But oh, there's also a very early drone scout. Yeah. Well, he sent the probe over, uh, so you know if he'd have seen a, a, a hatchery first, this would have also been all right for him. Yeah. Has to pull that probe away. Well, it's not such an early forge anymore, is it? Not quite, no. <laughs> there was uh, mortal combat happening at the top of the ramp, and neither player got to finish him but by throwing him off the and ramp. And it looks like he's just going to go over to Nexus now. I really feel that uh, maybe what Titan was trying to set up there was if his opponent was going to go hatchery first because mm -hmm. he opened up gateway expand last time. And this is actually, if he puts a pile on here, it's really it, annoying. Because it's, it, look at it, it's trying to be a hatchery first. I don't know if he can squeeze it in there. Yeah. Because there's no spawning pool. <laughs> He's been delayed already oh, by so five, much. 500 minerals. He can throw the spawning pool down now. <laughs> uh, He's trying to go, is he going three hatch? Not, surely not. Yeah, against, he has to. Against the Nexus and Forge? Yeah. Ah. Okay, this is interesting. Dude, where's the spawning pool? It's like, dude, where's my car? Oh. Dude, where's my spawning what? pool? What? Here? Why here? Oh. <laughs> okay, well. And this then is a gas. Interesting. Oh my god. What? This is such a weird location. It is. All is... right, this, this is a special. This is a special. Is this an aggressive positioning of a hatchery to get his units well, over there quicker? Well, technically, yeah, all right. I mean, but I mean, what's the difference? We've taken the left hand side one to the right hand side one. In distance. The right hand side one. You mean yeah, the. That, what's the that difference? One? What's, yeah. what's the difference? Nothing. There's Nothing. hardly any distance. No. Difference. Okay. So, so I'm not 100% certain why that one's uh, the chosen one. So it's a fake out. Well, let's, let's just Somehow. learn together what he's looking to do here. Well, it can't be a fake out because Titan's going to be like, where's your spawning pool? <laughs> um, Did and, he? Well, well, he went in there and saw no spawning pool and then a gas. Yeah. Which then the gas is gone. 
And he's obviously looking it's for like, the hatchery, and it is a weird... Wait a minute. Ty's like, what are you doing? Oh, he's what going back doing? in, though. Well, he's, he's looking to find what the hell's going on. I don't know what's <laughs> going on. Titan doesn't know what's going on. The guys at home don't know what's going on. Oh, he's on. going down here. Okay, so he thinks... He knows there's a third somewhere. He's but where? Doesn't make any sense. Titan's like, what? Ah, <laughs> uh, this is interesting. All right, well... Starbuck, he's going to send his drones down on the natural. And that hatchery is finished up over to the left hand side. He's like, well, there's no queen. Uh, yeah. What do you make of this, Paul? You're not I sure? I have absolutely no idea. <laughs> no, no, I don't know. He's going to go in and now see there's no gas. And be like, what? <laughs> <laughs> what are you doing? <laughs> this is cool. And now plus one attack starts. And I think he may feel that this is a proxy hatchery somewhere. And the thing is, if he finds it and goes for like a plus one zealot attack, it just dies, it's right? It's very far away. It's not defendable. No. And I think he may go over there now, maybe. He's looking down here again. He's like, is it? <laughs> Wait, what? <laughs> What's going on? <laughs> uh, it's like Protoss Whack-A-Mole, and he keeps hitting all of the empty spots. And he's going to look down here again. <laughs> he's like, <laughs> I don't get this game. This is this That's is what Titan's saying. He's like, oh. It's like, no, like Starbuck. But the, then imagine if Titan's like, oh, he forgot his spawner pool. <laughs> oh, dear. Bless him. Uh, but plus one attack's been researched. Uh, Chrono boosted. It's uh, actually really not just quick. researched. Yeah. Oh, wait, where's that going? Oh. Is he going back up there again? Oh, wait. Oh, I don't know. Nowhere. This is... <laughs> okay. So Tyen hasn't found this, three, this third hatchery. He may know that something's wrong. He doesn't know exactly what's going on. He may think his opponent just forgot his spawning pool and was just really messed up because of... Uh, the uh, Nerves probe and... hatch. No, oh. the probe hatch. Oh, yeah, yeah, okay. So he may think he's a bone just yeah. messed up a little bit there. Uh, but whatever the case is, there are already a couple of zealots out. And this is something I've seen a lot from Titan. He's actually, crun this is actually a very smart build from him. He's uh, pumping out zealots. So he's already pumped out zealots. Mm -hmm. To three zealots, and they will have plus one because he chronos the forge, right? right? Yeah. It's something I saw uh, of him earlier on against Nurtio in the round of 32, where he's now pumped out three zealots, he's pumped out plus one attack, and these three zealots are going to do massive damage because there simply isn't anything to defend them. Yeah, I mean, he sees that the progression on the road run, there's only one queen out, there's actually no zerglings over there's there nothing. either. There's nothing. That's, this is really bad. Three zealots can actually just rip this apart. And there's uh, ten zerglings on the way, but there simply isn't anything here, and these are plus one zealots bear him oh don't fight oh I'm like, oh. no run away <laughs> and the, the behind this the robo is being chrono boosted he's getting plus one armor on the way as well a few more gateways titan's absolutely flying in this game and then yeah the follow-up's like an immortal all in yeah so, um and he's already slowed his opponent down a lot right I don't know what this random third hatch is on the other side of the map these zealots are alive forever yeah they Time are warp now the, uh, the hatchery is just not doing anything for him. Eight uh, drones were killed, a lot of loss of mining time, a lot of loss of lava injects. Um, maybe this hatchery can be a saving grace, though. Perhaps. Because what happens if Titan just doesn't know and just goes for an attack on the front door? And what happens if there's a bunch of pylons and, and rubbish? And he still I thinks mean, not it's pylons, only two sorry, base. Uh, spine crawlers and stuff. Yeah, he only thinks it's two base for this whole time, right? I see somehow He's like moving his sentries to the main base. He's like, is there about to be a Nidus in my main base? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like, What's going is on? There a, is there a Nidus in my main base? Um, so he's building, he's going over to Colossus, actually. That's an interesting choice. Huh. I think that he's realizing that if his opponent's playing some weird swarm host style, maybe, that he's going to need the robotics bay in Colossus. But I'm certain at this point, Titan is freaked out. Doesn't like, know what's, what's going, going on. on. Um, it was planning an Immortal All-In. An Immortal All-In is terrible against uh, Swarm Host, so he's not really sure what that is. And look at that. Finally, oh. we'll see this. Finally. And then this will kind of I, uh, uncloud his mind, I guess, as to what's been going on all game long, right? Is that it? Ah, that's where it was. And now he warps in two centuries, three zealots, and says, all right, now I don't need that robotics bay. I'm not playing against Swarm Host. Let's go kill that base, and then let's have a look at the situation then. And he's chrono boosting into his gateways. He now is trying to switch up. The Twilight Council probably won't be used. I guess he could start plus two since he does have it, but he's going to go kill that hatchery. Yeah, it's a very short hop, skip, and a jump over to that location, actually, for him now with the army. And uh, army supplies, in fact, 46 to 47. Like, he knows it's there. He actually has to retreat after being spotted. There's no way he can hold yeah. it. Yeah. A lot of roaches may get caught there as well, which yeah. is uh, kind of sucky. Might have to cancel those. Well, they're going to pop ones. They're going to get stuck. Canceled a few at least. Oh. So, but yeah. bye bye. All queen! Dead. No! No, Queen! It was. No! Run away! Oh. It was, it was going to be a, hot, uh, a, a long shot to get out of there. To be honest, 
I don't really know what Starbucks doing in this game. No, I actually don't know what's happening, and it's not looking good. It really isn't. The Zerglings of Roaches can try and swing in from either side here, as well as the drones coming off the line. He knows he's in a desperate spot, because that's a lot of firepower that Titan has. I mean, he's got a Spire on the way, but he's got 300 gas. That's not a lot of anything. Um, <laughs> yeah, I don't really understand this too much. He's supply boxed 136. Maybe there was some magic build. The strategy was meant to happen. But as you can see from this position, he's about to lose his third base. He's going to be back on two if he doesn't work this out well. Good force fills there by Titan and great time warp. Oh, yeah. Three Immortals are so good in this position. Really good synergizing there of the force field and time warp in the right spots to slow down and mm. seal out things really nicely. And now just moving on forward slowly here. This is a great position for Titan to just retreat back to each time. Yeah. But to be honest, I mean, Starbucks doing okay. He hasn't died yet. He's on three, yeah. base, uh, three base worth economy because he didn't lose that many drones. 56 probes is okay to deal with this, but his supply count just isn't that high. And as you can see, Titan is catching up. The spy has not been used. A bunch of overlords are popping now, so you can start to build some other units and upgrades coming in. Uh, a couple of drones that get picked off there. Five, if that was all probes, and six uh, old drones. And during the earlier stages, he actually had a Hydralis Den going down, cancelled it, got the Spire, now has a Hydralis Den on the way again. Yeah. So uh, it's all over the place. And here. Titan's playing this very safe. He's not dedicating yeah. all his money into just an, uh, an army. He's actually fallen back and taken a third and then started to use that Twilight Council for plus two and, you know, used his robotics bay for Thilma Lance. And we'll look to play a longer out game here. So Starbuck isn't just dead and out. He's, he's, no, he's not dead and out now because Titan hasn't looked to try to kill him. He's just suffocating him away from uh, anything other than three bases at this moment. Yeah. 12 Hydras on the way. Uh, the first Colossus is not too far away and there's still seven sentries. This base is on a high ground, which means he's going to be able to force field onto the ramp to protect it. Yeah, and this is a lot of firepower because whilst he's transitioning onto Hydralisks, where are his Corruptors? How is he going to get Corruptors out? How is he going to afford all of this? Uh, those two Colossi already with a third one rendezvousing, they're going to have a really easy time at dishing out the damage to Starbuck. And unless he gets a really good flank, a really good setup, it's going to be hard to break the army. Yeah. I don't know how he's going to break this army. Yeah. Corru two Corruptors. Obviously, two Corruptors versus two Colossus isn't good. Uh, two. Oh. Two. Two. Oh. Roaches get killed. No. Uh, and now Titan has plus two attack versus zero zero again. Plus two attack, plus one armor. Zero zero ground units for Starbuck. Needs to buy time for these corruptors. If, if he can get enough corruptors and he can bring down these three now Colossus, there is still hope for him. He has a good concave set up here. Um, Absolutely, but can he actually break oh, the Colossus' oh. time warps? Roach is going onto the high ground. That could mean an even better concave, but I oh, doesn't want to take it. Mm. Was losing a lot already. Mm. Good force fields by Titan, cutting off one of the flanks or one of the uh, concaves. Army supply is very, very even here. The Colossi do get attacked oh, from the back from some roaches, fields. but it doesn't matter because they're going to clean up those roaches. The Colossus will go, one of them will go down, but aside from that, the army is too strong here for Titan. Yeah, Titan's powering through 165 supply, and Starbuck may have come to his end here at the World Championship Series as his units just aren't attacking. They're not doing the damage necessary, and Titan is approaching on a rematch versus Duck Duck and Starbuck, an excellent performance so far in the round of 32, GG. not quite being able to do it in the round of 16. But Titan is the one that moves on. And of course, let's hope that we see more of Starbuck in the future. He's yeah. a young player, he's got a lot of potential and uh, let's hope we do see him in the future. I think we will see more of him, Apollo. I think, uh, yeah, I think we certainly will. He's. Uh, yeah. An up-and-comer in the European scene, and the round of 16 alone is a fantastic achievement for him. So uh, we'll see him another time. Yeah, it's a, it's a, it's a little bit disappointing, of course, for him having a lot of fans come to cheer for him today. But for this being his first tournament, his first offline experience at 16 years old. Yeah. Titan was just a little bit better. He's today. experienced, and of course, MMA was as well. Yeah, Titan is an experienced chap. Uh, and under these high pressure situations, yeah. he knows what he has to do to perform. So Titan moves on to play against Duck Duck for the rematch, which yes. I'm very excited about because the first series was really good. Titan took it to the wire. And Titan is again in a position, just like last oh God, season, yeah. a PVP to move on. Last time it was MC, the second place finisher. This time it's the first place finisher of season two. History repeating itself here, but can he topple the reigning champion? 
It's going to be a tough one, uh, but again, there were those moments, there were those snippets yep. in Series 1 that could have taken him all the way. And, uh, you know, this is this could go either way, in my opinion. Certainly could. I do agree. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> all right, well, let's go over to an interview with our victor moving on to the final match of the night, Rox Titan. Congratulations, 2-0 uh, win and uh, safely through to the last game of the day and it's going to be exactly the same scenario you faced last season except it's not MC this time, it's also another Korean Protoss, it's Duck Duck. So let's talk about the game itself first. Uh, first map went pretty straightforward but the second map, were you as freaked out as we were? This was very weird. <laughs> very, very, very weird. <laughs> You, you, you obviously spotted the two, the two bases, you saw no gas, and then you were, what were you thinking? Were you, were you like, what's he doing? Is he swarm host or what? First, I think uh, I just don't, gi don't get the pull, so I think you have pull, but then I start to understand what's going on. <laughs> and, when, and when you finally scouted, because you scouted like 12 o'clock and 3 o'clock twice, you scouted and then you saw it's like, okay, and then you went to 3 o'clock, no, that's not, and you went back to 12 o'clock, and there was still nothing then, and you went back to three o'clock. And we could, although we couldn't see your face, we could tell that you were confused, you didn't know what was going on. But finally, you managed to scale that sort it of was nine, ten. Interesting. Because I know Starbuck is a very creative player, he always make some tricks. And I prepare this, <laughs> maybe a little bit. <laughs> but but not I that one. Scouted. And I was so wonderful. Link. So uh, talk me through the rest of the game, because once you figured out what was going on, that was pretty much it then. You'd already built 1-1 one, one, and you were well on your way to 2-2. Two, two. Your upgrades were already ahead of him. So was it just a, a done-done second map? Oh, second map? I, I don't know what to say. I'd, I'd think about the game in-game. I have some plan about game, but he is always changed because game was so weird. First, I think make a more fake immortal push, but then I see he have no units. And I don't know what to do, warp <laughs> units or just going what I wanted to do. But then I saw third base and I try and get Tech and just win some time to don't get drones. Okay, so moving on, it's Duck Ducks now. Last, last season, I remember, you were one map away and maybe just one small mistake away from beating MC and making the round of eight. So I know how much this means to you. I know that you want to get through this. What is it going to take to get past Duck Duck? Sorry? What, what is it going to take for you to get past him? Don't to get... win. To win against Duck Duck. Just play. Just play. Okay. All right. He's going to keep it simple and he's going to keep it straightforward. It's going to be a fantastic matchup and it's going to be this man here, Titan, going head to head with last season's European champion for a place in the quarterfinals of WCS Europe Season 3. Let's go and break down that very straightforward two-mat win for Titan. Yeah, hi everyone. Straightforward red eye said, and uh, that's why I'll keep it quite short. I don't want to rub too much salt into the wounds for Starbuck. I've asked uh, our lovely observer, uh, Funka Starcraft, to uh, put the replay at exactly this time, because I am quite a lot in agreement with, uh, with Apollo's evaluation here. He said, in this game one, that if the Mutilis prioritized taking out the army before going on the base race, he would have done quite well. We look at Titan's army. Now, Titan had a few setbacks this game. He lost his mothership core two to three times. Um, he let the opponent get uh, yeah, all the drones and didn't take too, too much damage. Now, his army right now is perfectly suited to deal with ground army. 15 zealots, three immortals, five sentries. But he only has four stalkers. Now, the mutilist behavioral patterns, because I've studied mutilists in their natural habitat. <laughs> I'm, a, I'm also a marine uh, biologist. Actually, they're not really in sea, they're in space. But anyway, their natural behavior is to do base trades. They love it. They absolutely love it. So when there's a lot of bases everywhere, and you're going to go do that, that works out just fine. But you need mutualist numbers of 20 and upwards. And you do that when you cannot face the Protoss army yet. But Right now, he needs a different behavioral, behavioral pattern for the Mutilis. If you go in with these 13 Mutilis, you kill the five sentries, maybe you lose a few Mutas. After that, you pull your Mutilis back, you take your road circling, there are no sentries left, and you can engage the stalkers directly, just surround the stalkers and kind of ignore the rest. 
after the Zerklings and Roach start with the Stalkers, two seconds later, your new Mutilus numbers come in, and they can just clean up everything. Now, granted, if we look at the Structure tab, the Structure tab, we've got uh, six gateways. So he can warp in new Stalkers, but just six extra, gateway, uh, six extra Stalkers isn't going to cut it against 15, 20 Mutilus. So, yes, a very sad... Um, yeah, misjudgment of Starwick of the situation. He could have cleaned this up, wouldn't have won him the game because he's not like a mad amount of bases up, but it would have been the, the way to stay alive and maybe have an advantage. But Titan always just went for that kill when he felt that he could and should. Maybe if he'd been a few more stalks instead of Zealots, even that opportunity would not have been um, very possible for Starbuck because he doesn't have an insanely good economy right now. Anyway, that's it. Game two was a bit weird from Starbuck and didn't quite get to do what he possibly would want to. And now, without further ado, I'm very much looking forward to the final game of the day, the rematch of Titan versus Duck Duck. But first, we head over to Red Eye for the next segment. Thanks for listening. Thank you, Grubby. Uh, yes, uh, marine biologist extraordinaire, cutting it down very nicely. And of course, we are going to move on to our fifth and final match, not only of Group D, but also of the round of 16. One more place remains in the quarterfinal, and that'll be decided very shortly. If you are into uh, uni right now and you're busy studying, you've just gone back or you're getting ready to go back, or you're at college or school or wherever, then this next segment might interest you. We don't want you to give up your studies. Obviously, you want to study hard. And you can do that right now because we're giving away double XP thanks to Blizzard in-game. So you only have to play half as many games. That might work out why. Or maybe you just play the same amount and you get double XP. I don't know. Either way, it doesn't really matter. Matt's not a strong point, obviously. But there is also 50% off Wings of Liberty and 25% off Heart of the Swarm right now. So it's a really good time to get yourself involved in StarCraft 2. Just go to StarCraft2.com and click on the back to school campaign at the top of the sheet. And I'll tell you what else. Let's just check in with the video to explain exactly how it works.